Welcome to episode 14, my name's James and in this episode it's getting dangerous because our player will die for the first time. Before we jump into coding, just a quick announcement, I updated Endless Cave to version 1.2, that means you now get cosmetics and potions and you can unlock all of this by collecting gold coins in your runs. Please try it out on the game link on my website or if you can, please download the app on your Android device and also give it a review if you can. Alright, let's go into our player prefab file and scroll to the update method because this is where we check if the player dies by reaching the spikes at the top of the screen. I'm creating a new subsection loosely called gameplay and this is where we create our check scroll death method. First of all we want to make sure that the player is still alive and not trigger multiple death scenarios. And then we take the top edge of the player sprite and we compare that to the position of the spikes and if this overlaps, that means the player touches the spikes and he must die. I have tweaked the values so that the spikes have to touch the center of the player sprite to make him really die from it. So let's create this ominous die method. And first thing, we check if the player is still alive. Then we set his health to zero, we set his state to dead, and we play the dead animation. This is why it's so important that we have flags that check that the player can die only once because the dying animation it should also play only once. Now let's head over to the play scene in the scenes folder and we scroll to the update method of the play scene and we use the player's state to check if it is time to trigger a game over sequence. So if the player is dead, we trigger the game over method and we stop the update method right here. For a proper game over screen, we need multiple things. So I'm creating a new game over subsection and our first method is called trigger game over. In this episode, we're doing the bare minimum. So just go back to the menu scene. But in the future episode, we will build the full game over screen. So here you see me using the phaser time object with the add event method. Here we can simply define a delay in milliseconds and then it will call the defined callback method after these 1500 milliseconds. And at the end of the scenes file, we're creating a new subsection specifically for switching scenes and the go menu method, it will start the menu scene. And if we try to run this code now, the player dies immediately. That's because we spawn the player already on top of the spikes, so he dies in the first frame of the game. So we go into the create player method in the play scene and we use the helper method that we created last episode to get the pixel coordinates of tiles on the level grid. So here I'm defining the player spawn point on the fifth tile in the first row of the level grid. And don't forget to initialize the helper object in the initialize method of the play scene. And if we refresh the browser window now, we can start playing and we see that if we get caught up by the top edge of the screen, we die. However, it looks a bit funny right now because there is a gap between the death point and the top edge of the screen. That's because we're not drawing the spikes yet. So let's do that real quick. As you know by now, our generator prefab is responsible for creating and drawing all the levels. So we create a new subsection for the spikes overlay and we create a new method called draw overlay. Each spike is one tile from the map's tile set and we draw one row full of spike tiles. Then we add each spike sprite to the overlay array and finally we save this whole spikes overlay in the overlay layer of the generator. We want to draw the spikes only once at the beginning of every level, so we add the draw overlay method to the generator's setup method. If we run the game now, we see that the spikes are correctly positioned, but there is still this ugly gap that would be part of the user interface. So let's add that also real quick. The user interface is part of the play scene, and we create this create UI method and we define the method in the UI section. 
In a future episode, we will add a lot more things to the UI like the hearts representing the player health and the score of the distance you've run. But just for now, we're going to create a top bar, a background bar on the top with the same color of the spikes. And now there we have it. We have a solid game loop where we can play the game and when it's game over we go back to the menu and we can play a new game without having to refresh the browser every time. I hope you're starting to notice that thanks to our preparation in the prefab files in the first 10 episodes of this series, the episodes now are getting a lot more straightforward and we can really focus on the features that we're putting into the game. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below or come on my Discord to start chatting with me. And please also follow me on Twitter. I'm really trying to grow my Twitter account and every follower helps so much. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.